Hello and welcome to the next part of this video tutorial. In this part I will actually start the walkthrough of the explanash output. And um, yeah, um, I will start right from the top of the script output and then work my way through it. So this will very likely take several parts to do so. So when you start the explanash script then you can specify various options parameters to control the output and um, one of the first things that explanash shows to you is this uh, legend and um, you can of course change these uh, characters that are used here but by default you will see that cpu activity in the um, graphs is then shown with this add sign and non-CPU activity is shown with this asterisk and general activity where is no point in differentiating between CPU and non-CPU activity is using this hash sign. So just to give you an example, uh, these are for example such activity graphs where there's no point in differentiating between uh, CPU and non-CPU because uh, it's just the, the uh, idea of such graphs is just to give you a graphical representation of the percentages here. Uh, so we'll find ma many of them like here again. So these are using this uh, general activity indicator. Uh, but there are other graphs like this here and here it actually makes sense to differentiate between CPU and non-CPU and then it will uh, look like this for example so that you get from this graph an idea um, the um, relative amount of uh, CPU activity versus non-CPU activity. So this means that here you see that approximately two-thirds of the activity of this parallel slave in this case was then CPU activity and uh, approximately one-third was then uh, non-CPU activity which means basically everything else than CPU which might be I.O. or anything else. So that's the basic idea of this uh, graphical indicators. There is one uh, exception to this general rule with CPU, non-CPU and general activity which I will come to later which is this uh, duration and database graph in the real-time SQL monitoring but uh, I will talk about that when I discuss the section. So the next part of the output is this general information section and here explain ash in principle just uh, echoes what you have specified on the command line um, respectively uh, add some more information if you for instance uh, like here didn't specify the actual uh, SQL ID, SQL exec start, SQL exec ID information then explain ash has to work out what it's actually supposed to uh, analyze and therefore you get here the feedback which SQL ID, SQL exec start, SQL exec ID explain hash has determined from the information as input given and you also get uh, an information about uh, the child number if uh, the plan should be taken from the library cache or the plan hash value if the plan should be taken from some other repository. So um, then you get here um, echoed the, the um, formatting options for DBMS X plan which will then be used at the execution plan output. So this is the default that you can of course configure in the script, then if explain ash uh, was supposed to search for some most recent execution, then it gives you here an idea that it used uh, this information session ID 250, which I passed here on the command line, and then uh, in parentheses you can see that uh, according to the parameters here, it was supposed to search for the most recent activity in the active session history. Another option would be that it searches for the most recent monitored statement for this session, which potentially could be a different statement. Hence, you have these different options that can be specified. And you can see here what explain ash used and understood from your options. You can also use these abbreviations in the recent versions of explain ash. So maybe um, it's also worth to see if you used uh, 
abbreviations if the explain hash got the um, parameters right. Uh, same applies to this uh, hash options here by default. Um, you, um, you see here it uses uh, show everything that can be shown by explain hash, but this is the um, option that you can use to control the output, so which sections actually should be shown on a very high level you can control here the uh, output and this is also described in the script header which options controls which section and um, to give you an idea what explanation is going to do uh, it, it repeats here these options again and then here you have another option that is uh, echoed here on this general information section which is which configuration set gets used by explanation which I describe in the first part of this tutorial what these configuration sets are about so in this case this means take uh, everything from the current ex active session history uh, use the uh, library cache for obtaining the execution plan and the SQL text information. Yeah, so um, then if you have uh, the corresponding license and the monitoring has been requested via this option here and the real-time SQL monitoring information is still available so if all this is true then um, you might get this section here where you get uh, the summary of the real-time SQL monitoring information and in principle this more or less is the same that you get in this overview section here of the uh, official real-time SQL monitoring report. So um, you get here uh, information about the user, the uh, duration, so the wall clock time that this execution took then the database time, how this database time was uh, spent on I.O., on CPU and so on and also this um, more granular information about the weight activity and the CPU activity so um, and finally here this uh, logical and physical I.O. stuff and uh, this is pretty much the same that you will see here again you see here the username, the status uh, which could be executing or if the client hasn't fetched all rows then it might be done first rows, first n rows or it could even be done error if an error occurred and this is what you see here um, in the official report in this place here this status. Uh, then um, you see here information about the parallel degree whether this was parallel execution or not and if it was parallel execution, if it was cross-instance parallel execution, so if it used multiple instances or not, this information is a little bit more um, uh, this, this is more granular than what you get from the official report for reasons that I explain in the other tutorials about parallel execution analysis um, for example, you could have a parallel execution plan that uses different degrees within a single execution plan, so there could be a minimum and a maximum degree that could be different. In this case, you see uh, there was only a single degree used, and the maximum DOP is what you see in the official report. This is actually the, the corresponding official report, so you here see this, see this degree of three that gets used and uh, as I said you would see here also potentially if there are different degrees used at first sight here in this overview. Another information that I add here that is not that uh, obvious from the official report is the number of parallel execution servers requested and allocated. Typically if you have a certain degree then you would expect to see here either a degree number of servers or two times degree number of servers because you have either one or two sets um, allocated but this is on data flow operation tree level the so-called DFO tree level and one execution plan parallel execution plan could consist of multiple such uh, DFO trees and hence you can end up with things like this here which uh, might look a bit uh, odd 
uh, at first sight that you have a parallel degree of three, but you have actually requested nine parallel execution servers, which is totally um, okay and uh, not uncommon to happen, but it gives you already an idea that the typical rule two times, at, at most two times uh, DOP in this particular case here uh, doesn't apply. So something um, probably is not uh, typical here. In this case here it's just that we have these so-called multiple, multiple DFO trees and therefore multiple times the servers, parallel execution servers are requested. So um, this is the reason why I show this here, so because it gives me immediately uh, an idea whether I handle here with different degrees and whether I handle here with uh, something that has multiple DFO trees, which can be important for analyzing parallel execution. And therefore, I show here a bit more information, is a bit more elaborate than the official report. The reason why you see here PX servers requested and PX servers allocated is that if PS or PX servers allocated is less than PX servers requested, this means you have a case of a downgrade where uh, some part of the execution or the overall execution ran at a lower degree than originally by the optimizer de determined. So there are various reasons why at runtime you might get such a downgrade, but um, in, in order to be able to see whether you had a downgrade or not, both values are shown. So if, like here, if those two values are the same, then no downgrade happened. If allocated is less than requested, then uh, a downgrade happened. Then we come to this uh, duration and database time graph that I have mentioned in the beginning. And the meaning of this graph here is that it's a cheap imitation of what the um, 11.2 report uh, looks like. So you see here, this is um, what we have looked at where already to the 12C official real-time signal monitoring uh, reports. And this is an 11.2 report. And you see here, there's a significant uh, difference between these two. The 12C report um, shows all these bars with the same final size. Whereas um, in the 11.2 report, there is um, an indication between the duration and the database time. Graphically, there is a relation between these two bars so that you, from the um, difference between the size of these two bars, you already get an idea about the um, degree of parallelism, actual degree of parallelism that got used. So in this case, we can see that we approximately have um, three times more database time than the du duration, which means that we probably have, on average, have uh, th had three active uh, parallel execution servers. And, and this is what you can tell from this uh, relation. If this bar here was uh, almost at the same size than the database time, then um, it uh, would be a strong indicator that although um, this was supposed to be parallel execution, something uh, went wrong and not all of the parallel servers were actually doing something all of the time. So this is uh, why I prefer this representation here so that I see at first glance, get an idea um, what is the relation between duration and the database time spent. And this is the same that I tried to mimic here with this um, graphical representation. So the upper part of this graph corresponds to the duration and is in this case uh, shown with this general activity indicator. And the lower part of the graph is uh, the database time. And this database time is then again differentiating between CPU time non-CPU time and there is a third uh, part that could be uh, shown here. Let me see. I think I should have a report where we can actually see it. This is um, all three components basically shown here. So again, this is the duration part and this is the CPU activity. This is the non-CPU activity, which in all other cases Therefore, this graph here is an exception to the rule. In all other cases, you 
only have this CPU and non-CPU part and in the non-CPU part you have everything else accumulated that is not CPU activity. For this graph here there is a third component which is again uh, using this um, general activity it indicator character but in this case doesn't mean uh, general activity but it means it's this so-called other time here. Uh, so we could see this also in the official report um, you can see here this uh, light blue part of this uh, bar here and uh, th which is this other time and um, since um, it's not uncommon that uh, you might have a significant part of your execution time spent on some other non further specified time I thought it's a good idea to have this also shown here in this graph that you see immediately okay uh, one third of the time here was spent on other time and it is uh, certainly um, a good idea to further investigate what this other time then was because uh, yeah, it's probably important for understanding the overall execution profile to um, investigate this um, other time, which you can do then by looking at the active session history samples that hopefully tell you what other time uh, this was about. But um, that's the reason why I have these three parts in this graph here. So again, the upper part is the duration and the lower part is the database time with these potentially three components CPU, non-CPU and other time which corresponds to the duration that you see here, the database time that you see here which is then in this case almost one minute versus three minutes which gives you this idea about one-third to three-thirds here. Uh, then the CPU time here gives you an idea about this indicator here, so almost a uh, little bit more than 50% of the time was spent on CPU. Then we have 20 seconds of I.O. time and uh, some other uh, time in total, which is then this non-CPU part representing. And then we have again this part here one-third approximately spent on some something else and uh, that's what you can tell from this graph and these timings here uh, that again as I said largely correspond to what you see here in these time and weight statistics part of the overview pane. And finally, of course, we have the, the logical and physical I.O. parts so that we can see here um, what uh, the amount of logical and uh, physical read requests, write requests, read and write bytes is, which again should be uh, very um, similar to what you uh, see here. Uh, yeah, so when you and I hover here or over these uh, bar then I can see here that this uh, is approximately very, appro very approximately the same and uh, if it was exit data then uh, you would even see here this cell offloading percentage which is also then shown here below in an exadata real-time SQL monitoring report and then uh, again some uh, final parts here, the program information, service information and if there was an error then the error message that you would also see from the official report. Okay, then um, maybe it's important to repeat that again if the real-time SQL monitoring information either wasn't requested or is no longer available then this section here will simply be missing. So um, the next uh, section then uh, would be um, this one here. Uh, then just have let's have a look at um, some other executions for the monitoring part to, to wrap this up. Uh, a serial execution for example then typically would look like this. So um, you see here that all these things tell you that this was not a parallel execution and uh, any 
information about degree and involved instances and so on is not applicable. Then the graph then typically uh, for a serial execution looks uh, like this that both components are approximately of the same size um, like uh, this here uh, should be the corresponding official report. So uh, you see here that uh, the database time and the duration is typically uh, very similar. As you can see here, confirmed database time and duration is the same. Of course, it, it is even possible to see um, a longer um, duration than the actual database time spent in cases where there is application think time or simply idle time where um, fetches are pausing and uh, therefore um, the, the database time could be even less than the duration time. This is uh, also possible. But typically if uh, the uh, execution time is dominated by the actual SQL execution part then for serial execution it would, it would look like this and again we have this uh, di differentiation in the database time part between CPU, non-CPU and other activity so uh, there is no uh, difference in terms of that for a serial execution. And then we can also have a look at, um, uh, here again, just I wanted to mention, you can see here that this was actually a, a cross-instance parallel execution. So in this case here, if you have a case like this, where you have parallel execution that spans more than a single instance, then um, you get this reported here, of course, in the real-time SQL monitoring part. But as we will see later on, um, in this is also um, recognized by the script, by explain ash, and in case it is a cross-instance parallel execution, you will then see that uh, the, there will be more sections, like for example, you see here this statement execution summary based on ash, and you will get then an additional section called summary per instance. So um, in case of cross-instance parallel execution, there will be a number of additional um, sections in the report that are about the um, slicing and dicing of the active session history information on instance level, which I sometimes find very helpful for cross-instance parallel execution because uh, not always uh, um, it is that all the instances do a similar amount of work and then you get in quite a good I idea here by this breakdown on instance level what happened on which instance. And uh, there are, as you will see, um, some other sections then do not necessarily have additional sections that are following them, but they show then um, again their data on a more granular level like um, you will see then there um, quite often will be additional columns that specify the instance ID and you get then a global um, summary and also a summary on instance level sometimes within the same section. So, so the, these are the two typical changes that you will see to the script output if it's uh, cross-instance parallel execution. You will either have uh, additional sections or uh, within, one section, uh, within one section you see then this additional instance ID identifier and uh, more uh, summary information uh, on global and on instance level.